Hi there, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. Hope life is treating you well. Thank you for watching this clip on asymptotes of rational equations. Now, normally textbook go through this in details, but it's really confusing. What I thought I would do today here is give you three distinct steps and you can follow and it works on um, I wouldn't say 100%, but 99.99% .99 of all the equations that you need to graph. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to use some funny pictures. We're going to check if head heavy. Okay, so think of this rational equation or expression as having a head and leg. Okay, but head heavy, I mean is the power on the numerator, is it heavier on the bottom? This is supposed to be a feet. Not a good drawing here, but you get the picture. If the head is heavy, then you have to use long division. Okay, let me walk through all the steps first, and then we'll go through this problem we have to graph. Second one, you're going to look for holes. So hopefully you can picture it. The Chinese say a picture is worth a thousand words, so hopefully we can we can utilize this. Holes are x minus 3 equal to 0 or x equal to 3. Those holes are where the bottom gets to be undefined. So think you have a cloth and there's a hole in there. Okay. Hole is on the denominator here. Okay. And third one is special points. So hopefully you can think of yourself when you have rational equation, think of the head, think of the holes, maybe shoes. Looking for holes in shoes. Okay, shoes you have you wear them on the bottom of your feet. So I'm hoping you can remind remind you like a croc shoe that my kids have. Or their ugly shoes, but they sure are convenient. Okay, so look for holes in the shoes, and then you look, look for special points, maybe twinkle in the eyes. Okay, so let's go through all those three steps and how we and see how we graph this equation. We started with x squared minus one, or minus x plus one, and check see if it's head heavy. Yes. So step one. It is head heavy. So we're going to do a long division. The reason we do long division is that gives us some idea of the slanted or horizontal. They're in the same category. So if you think about slanted asymptote, it's really just a horizontal line that's tilted upward or the other way around. But anyway, we need to do long division once it's head heavy. So x goes over here. I have x squared minus 3x. I'm doing a long division. I'm speaking out loud. So I have minus x minus 3x, so I have a positive 2x. I have a plus 1 and plus 2 here, so it's 2x minus 6. I have a remainder of 7. What that saying is this function can be rewritten as x plus 2 plus 7 over x minus 3. Now this is not really anything special. If you think about it, 21 divided by 2, you have 10 with a remaining of 1. So 21 is divided by 2 is really 10 plus 1 over 2. It's identical. Okay, so here's the uh, quotient and then here's the remainder. Okay, once we have this one, then we concluded when x gets to be positive or negative infinity, the horizontal asymptotes even though in our case it's more of a slanted asymptote, is x plus 2. Let's call this ln x plus 2. Okay, that gives you a piece of information. Let's write it over here. I'm starting to graph it. x over 2, uh, uh, x 2. So here's my slanted line. Okay. So step 1 give you a horizontal or slanted asymptote. This is step one. Step two, look for holes. Holes in the shoes, right? So holes, we have x 
minus 3 equal to 0. So x equal to 3 is the whole. Let's go find it. 1, 2, 3. I hope I'm not rushing too fast for you. There's a limit on YouTube of how long the tubes, the clips can be. So there's a lot to cover. Anyway, so here's my hole here. Okay. In and around the hole, that gives you the vertical asymptotes. Okay. Once you have the vertical asymptotes, here's what you do. x equal to 3, and then you're going to go pick two numbers. You're going to equal to x equal to a little bit bigger than 3. That's 3.01. And a little bit smaller than 3 right around the holes, and you're going to see what's going to happen, okay? So if you divide those or evaluate those number in there, you'll see one of them gets to be pretty big and positive. I don't know if you can see it, this little arrow I just put in there. Okay, it goes to positive infinity. That's where this error is. So if I go a little bit beyond 3, I have a big y number. That's why this asymptote goes over there. And similarly, if it's a little bit less than that, I have negative number here. Can you see it, I hope? All right. Next, what we need to know, we know that asymptotes, as x gets really big, that's the minus infinity here. Okay, so this little arrow goes here, and this little arrow goes here. I might apologize that I'm running out of room over there. Okay, so now if you connect to those two, it becomes the curve running out of room up here. But you see the trend, okay, so this is this little curve here. Now, number three, the last step, is the special points. What are the special points? Of course, we want to know, well, what happened to this one? Where is this one at? So f of a zero, in our case, happened to be minus one-third. So this is minus one-third that's here. Okay. And another question you want to ask is, well, does this curve go all the way up or it just stays under the x-axis? For that, you see, if x, fx, can it ever equal to zero? And the answer for this particular problem is no. And that's because the only time x can, f function can be equal to zero is if it's numerator is equal to zero. And this case has no solution. Okay, if you evaluate a b squared minus 4ac, you'll see that there's no solution. That gives us the clue the curve never crossed the x-axis. Okay? All right, I know it's a lot to digest, and I hope it's clear for you enough. Once again, from Tucson, Arizona, this is Dr. Pan, making learning math fun, at least trying to. If the video has been helpful, I would appreciate a comment or a thumb up. Until next time, have a confident day.